Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Dr. Karma Bryant, and this is Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. Thank you to all the new subscribers. Thank you to all the people that are just discovering my channel. Make sure you share, 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 share. You never know who's going through this. Thank you so much for all the comments, the emails. Thank you so much for sharing with me, um, you know, your triumphs, your tragedies, and even your successes. A lot of you have gone no contact for the first time, you know, broken up, divorced, you know, finally establishing your life. And it's such an honor and such a privilege to know that these videos are helping you. I'm so honored. Thank you so much for sharing your life with me. And so today I wanted to talk about, let's talk about that victim's mentality. Now, I'm going to do another video. I did a video previously about the vulnerable narcissist. Okay, and the vulnerable narcissist is the one that usually has a victim mentality all the time, you know. But let's talk about the survivors and the victims of domestic violence or those that are in, in this case on this channel, those survivors of narcissist abuse. You know, many people have gone through narcissistic abuse from childhood, from birth. That's all you've ever known until now you're starting to discover what, what you went through as a child growing growing up as an adult and even in the relationships that you have been drawn to because it was a comfort zone for you. You know, not saying that you were comfortable in that zone or it was not not that you wanted to be in relationships like that, but that's all you've ever known. You know, if you have a family that talks loud, you're probably going to talk loud yourself. If you have a, a, a family that's kind of quiet and reserved, that's that's usually how you end up being and what you're drawn to. And so if you've been in a toxic family, especially if you've had parents or a parent or a caregiver that had narcissistic personality disorder, you know, you've come up in a lot of dysfunction, you know, and what is a child to do when they're in a home with a parent that is so, uh, you know, psychologically or even physically abusive, where can they go? A child doesn't know how to protect themselves. Where's a child going to go uh, to tell someone? And even if there's no physical abuse, you know, you go back into the home. So how does a child protect themselves? Oftentimes, you know, you know, children also begin to develop narcissistic personality or have developed narcissistic personality disorder because they're protecting their emotions from this monster that they're living with, you know, the caregivers. And oftentimes you have people that grow up that do not grow up with narcissistic personality disorder may grow up with another cluster B personality disorder, such as borderline personality disorder, which is rooted in, um, trauma but oftentimes they grow up and you have to learn how to shut your emotions off because what can you do when you have a caregiver or a parent that is psychologically abusive calls you names tells you you're stupid tells you you're ugly or never has anything positive to say never makes you feel like you're loved or wanted you know you come home and you're ignored you you're left for yourself or you're you're constantly manipulated that's all you've ever known so this is the only way that you know how to get your needs met you know if it means crying if it means acting out if it you know anything and so, you know, what is a child to do? You can't escape it. And you're stuck in this house with this individual. They have this love hate relationship for the parent, you know, and so you grow up and oftentimes, uh, not oftentimes, I, I like that word oftentimes, most times than none, you know, you grow up and what ends up happening is, is you get into a relationship or you realize something is wrong. Something has happened and people take upon a victim's mentality is almost like a cloak a coat, you know, and um, it, it's, a, it's almost like a protective measure. You know, I've heard many people every time, you know, you may address something uh, in their lives, you know, and also remember this before I go to that, remember this, you know, being abused by a caretaker, a person in authority, a, an adult, oftentimes, more likely than none, most people will grow up having problems with authority have problems with rules, having problems with authority, because when you are dealing with an, that's why a lot of people didn't make it in the military. It wasn't the basic training. Basic training is a physical and a psychological push to push you to the limits to see how far you can go. Oftentimes it's not the physical uh, pressure that an individual can't handle. It's the mental pressure. Someone telling them what to do, telling them how to do it restricting them, teaching them order, teaching them discipline, teaching them honor, teaching them respect, you know, but what happens is, is because you come from a family, probably a narcissistic family or a person uh, with a, um, a, a problem or has narcissistic personality disorder, you know, that abuse, uh, uh, you know, the love abuse is all associated with a person in authority, a person misused their power, misused their authority, misused their position in their families, you know, and what happens is, is exactly like in the military, most people don't make it past the part where they tell you what to do, when to do it, what time to do it, you know, that, that environment, that safe environment that is constructed to teach you how to be a military service member, to teach you how to be a part of the military service members, uh, uh, branches, 
service, Marines, Air Force, whatever, Army, you know, but the bottom line or the foundation is discipline and order, you know, being able to follow orders and commands, you know, and that is the foundation to keep people safe when you go into war. You have to be able to follow instructions, follow orders, even if you're uncomfortable, you don't agree to follow the orders of people that are assigned to you, even those people that you may not like. Not every officer or, or senior enlisted individual did I personally like, nor did I even have respect for as a person. But I respected the rank and I res and I honored the position that they held. And so, but a person that has been severely abused and especially with narcissistic families and toxic families and family members, their love has been miscued or has been put together and, and their their thought of love is, is abuse. You know, their thought of love is it, it is associated and affiliated with abuse. That's why a lot of them can't handle constructive criticism. They can't handle someone telling them what to do. They, they have problems in the workforce because because it's hard to take instructions from a boss or someone that is over them. Oftentimes they don't make it in the military, you know, uh, and narcissists are the same way. They don't like authority. Well, why do you think they don't like authority? They don't like authority because number one, the parents never implemented authority. They never gave them rules. They never held them accountable for their behaviors or had consequences to behaviors. And likewise, you know, with a narcissist that has been abused, they've been abused by someone in a position of authority. And so they don't like authority. They take authority and is what they say and they make their own rules. Well, think about a victim or a survivor, you know, same way, you know, oftentimes they have a problem with authority. A lot of them have a problem with authority. You know, they have problems with counselors. They have problems with mentors. They don't like to be told what to do. And then if their behavior is addressed with them and, and the behavior is pointed out, they will come up with excuses. Well, look what I went through when I grew up. They never take accountability for their actions. They won't address because it's too painful. You know, well, look why I've been through what I've been through and this is why, or it's my PTSD, or it's my borderline, you know, and they take possession of something just like the the uh, narcissist, you, sh you hold them accountable. They project that onto someone else. They always blame other people. They won't take accountability for their actions, likewise for a victim and a survivor. Oftentimes they won't take accountability because taking accountability of poor behavior is almost like a slap in the face saying that I'm not good enough because this is what the narcissistic parents or or uh, or people in authority have said to them. So I want to go to this page. Um, I like going to Lorna Wolf's page, lonerwolf.com, victim mentality. And I'm not sure if it's a female or male. Let me look. I want to make sure I give proper credit. Lorna Wolf. Okay, it's two of them. It's um, Alethea Luna and Mateo Soul. Okay, there we go. And so here they addressed, it was, it was like some signs. This is 23 signs. I'm going to pick out some and, and, and talk about it. I really like what they were talking about. See, I still read and I still educate myself. Okay, so number one, one of the victim mentality symptom, symptomology is constantly blaming others or, or situations for feeling miserable. So you, you, it's almost like you feel guilty for being happy. You feel guilty for doing something for yourself. You feel guilty for buying things for yourself. You feel guilty for being free. You feel guilty and you feel uncomfortable being in peace and quiet. It's like you don't deserve it. You don't deserve anything. And, and you explain it off or you justify um, not being able to be happy. You don't take it, you know, you don't learn something new. You blame your situations in your past. You don't have the right, you know, why don't you have the right? Or, you know, it's not right. And you come up with all sorts of excuses as to why why you cannot be happy or why you cannot enjoy this or why you can't go to the movies or why you can't buy something for yourself. You know, why can't you buy a perfume or a cologne? You know, why can't you buy new clothes? It's always an explanation or a justification why you have to maintain this feeling. And in actuality, you feel guilty. You feel like you're wrong for, you know, they've made you feel guilty. for the, A narcissist is not going to let you feel good if they're not the one that caused the, the, the feelings of good. They want to be responsible for making you feel good or bad. And so you've taken on this you know, and, and subconsciously, you don't even realize that because of the fact that it wasn't someone else that did it, then I don't have the right to express it, feel it or enjoy it. See, uh, another one is, let me see, every, every life is against me. You know, everything that can possibly happen always happens to me. You know, I'm that one, you know, if the, bu bu the bubonic plague, if, if, you know, if, if a plague comes, I'm the one that's going to get it. But look how negative that speech and that thought is. You draw to you what, what it is that, you know, you can draw to the law of attraction. Your mouth will draw a lot of things to you. You know, I just never, I, I remember used, I used to always say, I can't wear white because every time I wear white, I get it dirty. I drop something on it. And over and over again, it would just, see, see, see. When I started changing what I was saying and believing, you know, believing what I was saying, I was like, you know what? I'm going to start wearing white. I think I like white and I'm not going to get it 
it dirty. And no, not every time I wear white am I going to get it dirty. I didn't have a problem after that. You know, you have to think about it. What you say is what you're going to draw to yourself. If you keep telling yourself, I'm going to open up a business, I'm going to do this, or I'm going to buy this car, or I'm going to do this, I'm going to put my money together, I'm going to save it. You start speaking positive things into your life, you're going to draw positive things. You remember, you have to put some actions to those words as well. You can't just sit around and say it. I'm going to be a millionaire. How? I don't know. It's just going to happen. No, you got to make it happen. If you believe it, you have to follow those plans and goals and put those things together. But if you're always saying everything bad that always happens to me, it, it always happens to me. Well, you're going to be miserable all the time because you are speaking negative words into existence. Just because things have happened to you doesn't mean that your life consists of that constantly. You have to change that. You change the ambiance. You change the atmosphere. You change your path, you know, and you are not your, your past. Uh, let's see. You see your problems as catastrophic and blow them out of proportion. Something something small, you will take it and make it into something huge. Something small, you'll make it into something way beyond what it really is. A lot of times, you know, because you've went through something, you may recognize behavior in other people. Well, you'll take that and you'll take your exact situation and put it on other people. And other people may not be paying attention to you. Yes, they may have similar behavior. Yes, they may do things or sound or may even look like an individual and you're triggered. And so now everyone that looks like this or says this or is doing this, you personalize it and that individual is out to get you. And that individual is probably paying you no attention, you know, or that individual could be a narcissist, could not be a narcissist, could be a person that has narcissistic traits, could be a person that's just rude, somebody that has not grown up. It doesn't matter because a, a victim or a, a you know, a, a survivor has residue. You see, a lot of you, even though you may have been out of it for a long, out of the relationship for a long time, it's been years, it's been months, whatever. A lot of times that's what narcissistic fleas are. Those are traits and residue left over from the relationship and especially if you grew up in a home with narcissistic parents you got some fleas attached to you you got some residue you have some uh, some some dysfunctional ways of thinking to survive and to get your needs met and so you can take a little thing and blow it totally out of proportion even when you have leadership or mentor the mentor is trying to tell you something or help you with something they can tell you something as as nice as they possibly can or as professionally as they personally personally can but because it triggers you and it makes you feel you know awkward or it, it reminds you of how this person and authority talk to you you'll blow it out of proportion i don't like the way you said it i don't like the way that you look i don't like the way you shook your head when you said it you know you're too cocky you're too you know and and that is you that is you that's what's in you not in them give people the benefit of the doubt um you think others are purposely trying to hurt you everybody's out to get you Everybody is out to get you because everybody reminds you of the people that you've been around. No one is trustworthy because everybody reminds me of the person that I was with. That doesn't mean put up your guards and protect yourself, but everybody's not trying to hurt you. Everybody's not. Sometimes a narcissist does not focus on you. They may see you and check you out, but you don't have what they want, you know, and so you are not their target. But everybody is not out to get you. But this is how people have grown up or have people been in a relationship. You come with your, you know, your nerves all exposed wide open. And so you you can't, this is not the time that you get into a relationship. You are absolutely not healed. Open wounds, bleeding everywhere, you know, pus leaking. You know, this is not the time you connect with people. This is the time you get a good mentor, a good counselor, as I always advertise for um, the um, a sponsor link that I have, betterhelp.com backslash Dr. Carmen, which provides you with a 10% discount. Connect with them as a nominal fee. If you're having financial difficulties, then you let them know and they'll give you a grant. But that's the time that you connect with a counselor. And if you can't afford it, look for someone around you, uh, you know, that maybe be able to help you with trauma. But this is, this is, you have to get into counseling to have to deal with this. You have probably have post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, reliving past painful memories that make you feel like a victim. So constant reminder of how you grew up in your home, constant reminder. You know, sometimes people are still fighting their mothers. Sometimes people are still fighting their fathers. So everybody that you meet ends up playing that role and you're constantly trying to prove your worth, constantly trying to prove yourself, you know, and really what you're doing is you're still fighting that person that hurt you. Everybody that you meet, you always try to prove yourself and win win over your mother or your father to show that I am worthy, I am beautiful, I am smart. And so it's a constant conflict and everybody, you feel victimized with everyone. Um, let's see. 
Even when things go right, you find something to complain about. You can't enjoy your peace and quiet. People just can't be nice to you because they have an ulterior motive. Take the compliment and keep rolling. Everybody doesn't want to have your babies. You know, everybody doesn't want to drink your bath water. You know, so if they give you a compliment, thank you. I appreciate it and keep going. You know, it doesn't matter. You know, every narcissist is not out to get you. You know, and yes, there are a lot of narcissists and most people want to put on their Wonder Woman outfit and ding thing and fight every narcissist but in actuality every narcissist is not out to get you and even when you meet them what harm are they doing if you're not connecting with them it's different if you get in a relationship with them but they're out there and you have to interact with them i interact with them all day long every day and so but they don't do me any harm because i'm not emotionally attached to them first of all and i'm not also professionally attached to them some of them are, i am some of them i'm not but you 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 know you can't you, you a lot of times your nerves are just bad you're triggered so you really have to get into counseling you really have to get into counseling uh let's see i'm just gonna skip down i'm not do it all you're you're um you believe you're the only one being targeted for mistreatment Everybody is not trying to hurt you, and there's sometimes a person hurts everybody, so you're not the only one. You're not the only one that's being mistreated, and so you have to come up with a game plan just to protect yourself, protect your assets, protect your business, protect your mind, and you know, you can speak and be cordial. That doesn't mean you have to be BFFs or be in a relationship with these people. Uh, let's see. You feel powerless and unable to cope effectively with a problem or life in general. That's because you were groomed that way when you were growing up by the narcissist. You can't figure out nothing and you're too dumb to make it happen. You can't live life without me in your life. So you end up dating someone or marrying someone that, that that's what a narcissist does. They want you totally codependent and dependent on them where there's nothing you can do in a life without them. They make the decision, they pay the bills, they do everything. So you leave out of there and it's just, it's like residual, the residual, the residual. It's constant cycle, 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 starting from childhood on and keep moving forward. And so you're stuck in this cycle and it's woe is me and I can't ever do anything. Where do those words come from? Go back and look and see where, who told you that? Where do those words come from? And then you say, but it's always true. It always happens. Okay, change the, what you're saying. Change what you're saying until it begins to happen. Let's see. You believe you're not responsible for what happens in your life. Others are. You have to take accountability. A narcissist doesn't take accountability. So a lot of traits you have now are traits like them. And so and a victim mentality is always, you know, if someone corrects you for something, it's always, woe is me. And, you know, and everyone is out to get me. And they, you don't take accountability. You don't, don't take responsibility. Um, I was watching this video on a little meme on um, YouTube. I know some of you have seen it where the little boy was in the water holding on to the branch and his feet was out of the water. And he was screaming and crying. He was totally scared because he thought that he was going to drown and his mother kept trying to put his feet down his feet down and he kept on screaming he over analyzing everything <laughs> that's what it said over me over analyzing something so a little boy screaming and screaming and his feet are in the air and his mom keeps trying to push his feet down she finally pushes his feet down and he stands up in the water and the water is right here that's a victim's mentality sometimes you have the capability of putting your own feet down and standing up in the water and you don't realize it because you know you have been so wounded you have been so hurt you don't see any other way out you have to change your future. You have to change the way that you think. And you really have to get good mentors and counselors in there to help you with that process. So let's see. You feel attacked when you're giving constructive criticism. When you're on a job, you want people to give you constructive criticism. You know, you got to think a narcissist takes constructive criticism. They use it to hurt you on purpose. They try to tear up your emotions. They try to make you feel less than. You have to be able to discern the difference between you may have a narcissistic boss. Who knows? But you have to take constructive criticism in order to move forward. My mentor, she provides me with constructive criticism. And the constructive criticism oftentimes does not feel very good. Because you know why? It points out my, my what's the word I'm looking shortcomings. It, point, it, it points out my shortcomings and it points out where I can better myself. But the difference between her and, and a narcissist is I know she means well. You have to know the character of the person that you're working with, whether a mentor or whether whether a counselor or whether a leader that you're working with that cares, you know, for you, they care about your future. And so they'll say some hard things to you that's going to make you uncomfortable. But the purpose is to make you better and to change that dysfunctional behavior. If they're always friends cater to you because they don't want to see you hurt. You know, they want they want to be cool with you. They don't want to see you hurt. So they mentors, counselors, they're focused on making sure that you get to where you are going and they point out dysfunctional behavior, thought or even even speech and a lot of times the correction is very uncomfortable constructive criticism is very uncomfortable but it's to better you 
Narcissists don't try to better you. They try to tear you up. So they take your negative and your positive and make it that you can't handle constructive criticism. But you know when it's painful and it really just tears you up to a point where you feel like you're being attacked. But a lot of times when you're coming out of these situations, you know, victim mentality, you know, even constructive criticism is very painful and hurtful because it's a reminder of how you've been handled by your family, by your mother and your father, by siblings, by people in authority. You know, so I can see where you can get confused. I, absolutely. So let's look here. You seem to enjoy feeling sorry for yourself because you get attention. People will pay you attention. You know, you cry at the drop of a hat. People say something to you or they mention something to you. You just start crying because it focuses the attention on your emotions now. But that means that you're operating out of emotions. And that is exactly what the narcissist is looking for, a reaction, emotions, so they can dig in. And so, but even as a survivor, you know, you operate out of emotion. It doesn't matter what people say, you're emotional because it gets your needs met. It gets comfort. It gets attention. Um, you know, if someone is telling you where you're wrong and they're making a correction, to cry and and blame it on your your upbringing and how awful people have been and you remind me of the things that happened will cause a lot of people that's manipulative because it causes a lot of people to end up changing their mind because now they feel bad well I don't want you to feel that way so what happens is is that that survivor that victim ends up manipulating to get what they want now they meet someone that doesn't work with where the emotion doesn't work like that and they still stay you know i'm sorry that hurts your feelings or you know apologize for me for that hurting your feelings it's not my intention to hurt you but you know i stand by what i say then all of a sudden you're horrible and you meant to hurt me and and you are you are a narcissist and and you you try to manipulate and gaslight and you're trying to you know because that's that victim's mentality everybody is out to get you it doesn't matter if the people are helping you as soon as you can't get what you want or as soon as you can't manipulate someone oh it you know the drama is on now doesn't that sound very much like a narcissist and this is the victim and the survivors okay uh the world is scary mostly bad place everybody is terrible this is a scary place i don't want to deal with anybody i'm going to stay in the home i don't want to talk to anybody everybody's a narcissist because you have to heal let's see you believe that everyone is better off than you uh let's see sharing your tragic stories with people people talk about people would talk from person to person to person and keep telling their horrible stories telling how they've been victimized tell them how they they tell everybody they just on and on and on because they need that attention they need that comfort they need someone to feel sorry for them let's see have a habit of blaming attacking and accusing those you love for how you feel uh, you feel powerless to change your circumstances. You expect gain sympathy from others when you don't get it and feel upset. You refuse to analyze yourself to improve your life. You won't take the, the steps to improve your own life. It is everybody else's responsibility to help you. When you are going through weight loss or you want to lose weight, that's your responsibility to stop eating. If I eat and you get big, that ain't my fault. That means you're eating too, you know. Some people have a high metabolism, so they can eat and they're not going to gain weight. You may not have a high metabolism, so you gain weight. But you'll look at them instead of looking at yourself. You're the one. You're not shaped like her. You're not built like her. Or you're not built like him. Or you don't gain muscle mass like that. Like, you know, you are an individual, unique person all by yourself. You have to analyze yourself and look at your own behaviors, your own thought patterns. And everybody's not out to get you. You may have ran into a lot of narcissists. What draws them to you? Where's the open wound at? What is magnetizing them to you? Where is their unhealed places in you? You know, and sometimes they are they are attracted to strength as well. But what is it that causes you them to gravitate towards you? You have to take the time out and step back. Find someone to help you. Find counseling. Get into counseling to help work because no matter how long you've been out of it, a lot of times you don't even realize that you have a victim's mentality. It becomes it comes second nature to you because that's how you learn to survive, coming out of these type of families. Uh, let's see, you're constantly putting yourself down. You can't even take a compliment. Someone gives you a compliment, you explain it off at, oh, I bought this at the Goodwill. Nobody asks you that, just say thank you. you know, I love your hairdo. Oh, you know, this was just a $6 bun. Nobody asks you that, just say thank you. I love your makeup. Oh, well, you know, it's covering up a lot of scars, you know, and it, and it make me feel better. Nobody asks you that, just say thank Thank you and keep moving that lets other people know that you but you see how that draws people to you like oh you kind of you kind of jacked up you know you're emotionally you know not right you know you're always explaining away compliments you know wow you are a good writer oh you know uh, I had no choice because when I was growing up my my father made me write all the time or my mother she wouldn't you know but nobody asked you that 
that means that your inner securities, your pain, and that victim's mentality is starting to manifest and people can hear it come out of your mouth. You don't think a narcissist can pick that up and you get drawn? So I encourage each and every one of you that if this is you, go find a counselor. Go to Psychology Today to see if you have any in your local area that accepts count, uh, that accepts your insurance so that you can go and see them face to face. You know, if you don't want to leave your home, if you're not at that place yet, you know, and you can afford it, you know, excuse me, for a nominal fee, go to betterhelp.com backslash Dr. Carmen. And when you click on that link, you automatically get a 10% discount. Also, if you're having financial difficulty, because it is, you know, a nominal fee, you know, but you can vet counselors, meaning you can look and see, are you a trauma professional? Do you understand psychological abuse? Don't use the term narcissist abuse at this particular time. You call it what it is. It is domestic violence, psychological, severe psychological abuse by, uh, by a person that has mental health disorders, you know, PTSD, complex PTSD. PTSD. Talk about that kind of stuff. You know, lifelong um, uh, abuse from home, sexual abuse. Use the terminology, use the definitions and ask them if they know. Every now and then, you know, you can ask them, well, do you understand what narcissist abuse is? I've heard of it, you know, and, and sometimes they'll tell you they have. You know, so vet the counselor. And if you can't afford it, you're having um, financial difficulties, let them know they do have grants available to you. And that is betterhelp.com backslash Dr. Carmen. And also, if you have not already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It is Dr. Carmen Bryant uh, uh, and it is Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. I do have a podcast. It's on Podbean. It's Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. But you can also find me on iTunes, Spotify, um, iHeartRadio, Google. Google. Is it Google Play? Yeah, Google Play. Um, and some other ones, but Podbean is where I'm at. Um, and you can look for me there. I have a few episodes on there. I have to kind of fill that back up because I'm working on some things. I'm working on some classes uh, for you guys. So I'm working on some classes where you can register for the class and take a class, you know, and, and you send some suggestions. I'll work on them, but you know, I'm, I'm putting some classes together. Where there's a video and I'm trying to put a little workbook together uh, for people so that you can continue your process of healing. Um, and a lot of you are doing very well. And please make sure you also go check out my mentor. Uh, she's on YouTube as well, Helen Sadler, Destiny Helper. And then if you actually go over to uh, and make sure you subscribe and share, she provides you with information about narcissist abuse on a biblical and a spiritual perspective. She is the presiding prelay of Into His Chambers Global Ministries. So she is the senior pastor. She's my mentor. She's my spiritual parent. And she's also my pastor. Um, and so, and, and, and she was my counselor for many years. And so um, go check her out. Uh, she's a phenomenal, powerful woman who really knows what she's talking about and brings it to you from a biblical perspective and backs it up with scripture for those of you that are believers. And even if you're not, go and listen to her because she still um, provides information and acknowledges the fact that everybody does not have the same belief system. Um, those of you that are looking for someone, you know, ministry wise, she's also on Facebook under uh, Apostle Helen. I think it's Apostle Helen, Apostle Helen or Into His Chambers Global Ministries. I think either or. Um, and you go and you can watch her live on Periscope as well under Apostle Helen. And so you can get your balance. I believe in the whole person concept, you know, not just the emotions, the soul, you know, the mind, but also the body, physical, you know, physical care and spiritual care. I believe the whole person concept is what helps you with your healing, you know, to get healthy, to get um, out of this trauma based situation that you were in. Those narcissistic fleas, that's that residue that you have to work on and so hopefully this has helped somebody make sure you check out my book it is on amazon and it is on barnes and noble you can get the the ebook you can get the um kindle version or you can get the hardback or soft copy and it is um unmasking the illusion of perfection it is about narcissist abuse it is about real people real people telling their stories you know how they were abused in their youth how they were uh, manipulated and and trauma bonded even as children by their parents grandparents uh how they ended up getting into relationships with narcissists what they were thinking how they escaped how their children were abused uh not just how their children were abused abuse, you know, some of the residue from that and what they were thinking and what they were taught in order to stay in it. Um, also, you know, the, the feelings of homicide and suicidal ideation. Now, it's a Christian book because I provide encouragement through um, scriptures. However, those of you that are not believers, or many of you said that you're not believers, you got the principles of the book where you see that you are not alone. These are professional people. These are people that, that um, had high positions in high places, you know, and they were bamboozled. They were manipulated and how the behavior of the narcissist was where people just didn't know that they were with a narcissist, how they were 
left, how the new supply handled them and their children, you know. And so all this information is in this book is a very easy read. And, you know, and most people say they read it really quick. It's an easy read. There is some typos in there, but that comes from the editor, you know, some some t some gram grammatical errors and everything. But if you can look past that, that's fine because you get the principles out of that. And it's a short, easy read. Uh, and, and thank you so much for those of you that have um, supported me in it. Make sure you share that information because somebody needs it. If you need to donate books to the YWCA, if you need to donate books to like uh, domestic violence um, centers where you have women and children, even men, to read this book. You know, how these women um, talk to their, to their sons, you know, uh, but it's in the book. And so thank you for supporting me. Thank you so much. There is a link underneath there. If you, uh, some of you have asked if you want to donate Cash App or PayPal, I love it. Thank you so much for those of you that have given me an opportunity. I have been uh, had the opportunity to do one time coaching with many of you guys. You need to. Some of you just wanted to check in. You know, some of you guys want to check in to see to get some guidance. You know, to get some goals set up. You are more than welcome to email me. I am providing discounted prices. I'm thinking about extending the discounted prices because it has really been a great turnaround. Most of you guys just need a one time conversation maybe two-time conversation and you guys are on the roll so you guys are ready and I thank you for giving me that opportunity so I'm getting ready to go I'm sorry I haven't been able to make videos this week because I really really I would show you my desk but uh, I've, been, I've been doing better you know but you know it's the it's the beginning of the year so you know those of you that have businesses you have a lot of paperwork to do um, a lot of a lot of stuff I have to do and so I wasn't able to come on but I do miss you guys and I do want you to know that I am here I haven't gone anywhere and I'm still doing videos so thank you once again to all of you and stay tuned to find out my travel schedule. Those of you that are in the Washington area or close by, do know I do have, if you go to my community tab, there is um, a conference going on in Bellevue, Washington. It's the Mending Souls Conference um, in um, February 14th through the 15th in Bellevue and is hosted by uh, the Honorable Pastor and First Lady Doris, Frank and Doris Gayway and is the Mending Souls Conference. Um, and it's talking about, you know, true authentic self, but also it's talking about relationships. And so I am, uh, you know, I have been um, honored to be a part of that and to be one of the workshop speakers and to be amongst the panel that will be speaking so please come and check it out just go check out the flyer so you know where to buy the tickets please come out there i would love to meet you guys i would love and bring your book with you you know i'm gonna bring a few books with me as well if you want to purchase it but thank you so so much for supporting me and you guys go and be great